Hi, I'm Kathy from the Dullfield Quilt Company, and today I'm going to show you this faux piping binding. This is one of my favorite ways to finish a quilt. It is fast and it does not require hand sewing, plus it has this little extra piece of pop. Okay, to make this faux piping binding, or some call it the flange binding, you're going to need some supplies. First is some fabric, a rotary cutter, some binding clips is helpful, scissors, marking pen, and a quilter's ruler and iron as well. For your fabric, we're going to start by cutting them in strips. We're going to use two different size strips. The smaller of the strip, which is one and a half inches wide, is actually the main part of your binding. So that's, on this example quote, that would be the red fabric. It seems like that might be opposite to what the binding looks like, but it's actually the smaller width size is going to be the main binding color. And then for the piping, which is the green on this example, it's going to be cut a little bit wider. These strips are going to be cut at one and three quarters inch wide. So again, you need strips that are one and a half inch for the binding, and then one and three quarter inches wide for the piping. And you're going to need enough strips to go around your project as well as overlap. You usually probably want six to eight inches extra so you can overlap your binding strips. Okay, now that you've got your strips cut, you're going to then sew them together like you would a normal binding. I'm going to sew the gray strips, the piping strips together first. And I like to cross them over like this. And then I like to sew diagonally so that when I open it up, I've got a diagonal seam to join them. And then I'm going to also do the same with the pink, the actual binding fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've got my binding strips all sewn together, I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the excess, and then I'm going to press these seams open. You may notice I have a lot of seams on the pink one. That's because I was using some scrap fabric to create this. Okay, once you have your seams all pressed open, then we're going to sew the strips together. But first, I just want to make sure that when I line these two strips up, that I don't have the seams overlapping. So I'm just going to start at the top and see how it works. I'm clip it. I just want to make sure once I've aligned them together, that those seams don't overlap. And it doesn't look like they overlap, so I'm going to go ahead then finish clipping this together, and then I'm going to sew a quarter inch along this top line. Okay, now that I've got my two pieces sewn, I'm going to press the seam to one way. I have heard of some people liking to press the seam towards the piping fabric because it may create a little bit more volume in the piping, and I've heard others just prefer to press the seam towards the binding fabric. I'm going to do it towards the piping fabric. So I'm going to just flip the gray over and then I'm going to press, and you're going to see that the seam then will be pressed towards the piping fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. First I'm going to set my seams by going over all of them. You can use steam if you'd like. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to start pressing the seam to one side. Okay, now that my seam is pressed to one side, I'm going to then line up the edges of the two unsewn sides. This is going to naturally create a little bit of that piping look. You can see it start to form with the gray on there. And then you're going to want to press this really well. I'm going to also starch this just to make sure that this stays nice and crisp. Okay, now that we've ironed the pieces and folded them and ironed them, we're going to sew them from the back first of your quilt. And you are going to want the piping fabric on the top. We're also going to need to make sure that we leave 
a gap because we're going to overlap these at the end and then sew the rest of the binding on. So I'm going to probably start about four inches down from where I'm going to sew this. But first I'm going to just go ahead and use some binding clips. And I'm going to clip this side first. Okay, I'm going to sew starting about here and do a quarter inch and then I'm going to stop right before the corner, about a quarter inch, turn it, and then I'm going to sew diagonally and I'm going to show you that, show you that on the sewing machine. Okay, so we're going to sew a quarter inch down the side and I'm going to stop about a quarter inch before the corner so I can turn it. missed my corner a little bit so I'm just backing up but I'm going to then put my needle down turn it and then I'm going to sew a diagonally to the corner here okay, you're going to cut your thread lift your needle up and now because we sold to the corner we created a way to just fold this over diagonally so it makes a perfect diagonal right here so I'm going to finger press that and then I'm going to fold the binding back over so that it looks like this. And then I'm going to I'll just put a pin there or a clip. And then I'm going to sew a quarter inch starting at the top here. Now that the binding is all sold on, I made sure when I was sewing it to leave a nice big gap between these because we're going to turn these and we need as much room as we can get so we can sew the binding edges together. So our next step is going to be to trim the binding. We want the overlap to be as thick as the actual binding. So I'm using an extra piece of binding. I press it open and using the bottom start point I'm going to use that as my guide for where to trim this. And then I'm just going to draw a line on the top piece of where that, that is. I do want to make this about an eighth of an inch shorter. So on this top piece, make sure you're not cutting the bottom, I'm going to cut about an eighth inch below that line. And then we're going to open this up, give it a little bit of a finger press. Going to open this one, the bottom one up as well. Finger press that as well. And then right sides together, we're going to place this piece right on top of the other one. And then we are going to sew a line diagonally down here, just like we would when creating regular binding might help to put a few pins in there. If you need to draw a diagonal line, go ahead and take your ruler from one corner to the next. I'm going to go ahead and sew this and I'll be right back. Okay, once you have it sewn, go ahead and take your pin out. Then you're going to just trim a quarter inch from the sewing line. If you want, you could press these back open, pull a little bit, and you're binding is connected to both ends. So I'm going to go ahead then and I'm going to sew a quarter inch right at the top. So now that our binding is sewed on, we're going to flip it over and we're going to start to turn the binding around to the front and you'll see how that, bi that piping just adds a little bit of pop on there. I'm going to fold it over on all the edges and then I'm going to just use binding clips to clip it into place. So in the corners, you're going to want to finger press the edge here, and then you're going to fold it back over to create that miter corner. Make sure your piping is, is aligned, and then go ahead, put a binding clip there to hold that in place. And you're just going to continue around all the edges of the quilt. Okay, so once you have your binding clipped around, 
Then you're gonna to wanna to sew right on top of that piping, right at the seam between the gray and the pink. You're gonna just do a top stitch right along there. Okay, so we're at the sewing machine. Now we're just gonna sew right in between the piping and the binding. So you're gonna start with your needle right down into that, that seam and you're essentially just gonna stitch in the ditch on this and you're gonna stitch all the way around to secure your binding to your quilt top. Once you get to the corner, leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot, and you're going to turn your piece around. And then you're just going to continue stitching in the ditch until you've made it all the way around your quilt. Now that you're done stitching the front of the binding, your quilt is done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you'll visit us at www.delfieldquiltco.com. If you like this video, please like it and consider subscribing. Thank you.